With the second ever Forbidden Door pay-per-view right around the corner, I've been diving more into the world of Japanese wrestling as of late. New Japan Pro Wrestling has been the gold standard for the land of the rising sun. But since the company just recently started producing an American-based product, with first the now annual Forbidden Door pay-per-view and NJPW Strong, I realize some might have a lack of knowledge on the NJPW product and might feel intimidated when enjoying the pay-per-view when they don't know very many of the names. But fear not, because I am here to introduce to you the best New Japan Pro Wrestling has to offer. Get ready to discover your new favorite wrestler. This is Extreme League Wrestling. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next upload. And in no particular order, here are our top 10 New Japan Pro Wrestlers that you need to know about. Kazucha Okada. An absolute legend that is still developing his legacy, Okada has been the guy in New Japan for quite a while now, always lurking around the world title scene, if not holding the top prize himself. His bouts with Kenny Omega lit up the internet wrestling community community in the mid-2010s and saw Dave Meltzer handing out stars like they were going out of style. It's very arguable to say that without these bouts with Kenny Omega pre-AEW, AEW wouldn't really exist. Currently one-third of the Never Open Weight Trio's Tag Team Championships with two other men on this list, the Rainmaker hasn't just made it to the mountaintop, he lives there. Personally, I'm predicting that his match with Brian Danielson will be match of the night for this year's Forbidden Door. When you see this man step into the ring with the American Dragon, you'll see for yourself why Okada is considered to be one of the best in the world. Will Ospreay Billy the Goat has been wrestling on and off AEW television for some time now, but if your only sample of Ospreay is AEW Dynamite and Rampage, oh, you've seen nothing yet. The beast he's become in New Japan Pro Wrestling is truly something to behold. The leader of the United Empire was able to show off a bit of his potential at last year's event, successfully defending his IWGP US title against Orange Cassidy in a Match of the Year candidate. Will Will Ospreay has been the poster boy for this division after the pandemic era, telling great in-ring stories with the likes of Juice Robinson and Kenny Omega. Speaking of Omega, there's a reason why their first match at Wrestle Kingdom is held in such high regards. The most heart-stopping offense and selling that'll make your Billy Gunn pucker, Will Ospreay is going to be the hottest free agent in wrestling sooner rather than later, and can take any company to heights it's never seen before. Hiroshi Tanahashi The man, the myth, the legend, the ace of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hiroshi Tanahashi Hashi built in JPW for the modern era of wrestling, and arguably laid the groundwork for people like Okada and Omega to be successful in wrestling. Hell, he even coined the name of this pay-per-view name. Flashy, energetic, and captivating in every sense of the word, Tanahashi has been the face of the company for years. Since handing over the reins to the Rainmaker himself, the Ace has been able to add a variety of matches to his resume, and even main eventing the first ever Forbidden Door against John Moxley for the interim AEW world title. His never give up attitude makes John Cena and Hulk Hogan a great reference point for this man if you're going into New Japan Pro Wrestling completely blind. Horseshoe is an active legend right now, and if he comes to a town near you, I highly recommend seeing him, because his talent is something you have to see to believe. His match with MJF at this year's event will definitely be an entertaining show to say the least, given their opposite styles. Tomohiro Ishii I love this man. The Stone Pitbull is the same hard-nosed, no-nonsense wrestler you might have already seen on AEW Dynamite previous to this year's event. But his recent work in the States doesn't even scratch the surface of his resume. With the strength to slap your soul right out of your body, he's built a reputation on his aggressive striking style. Chris Jericho has just been one of the many men he's tenderized over the years. Kenny Omega, John Moxley, Eddie Kingston have just been some of the five-star classics Ishii has been able to put on, with his two matches against Eddie Kingston being two of my favorites last year. I could go on for the whole video talking about this beautiful bulky boy. Seriously though, if you take away anything from this, go watch Ishii vs. Kingston at Capital Collision 2022 and thank me later. Zack Sabre Jr. ZSJ is known as one of the best technical minds in the world of wrestling. Notice I only said one of them. Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. are considered equals in that regard and surprisingly have never really faced each other on a big stage. Sadly though, this match was a victim of the infamous Injury Mania 2022. That planned match was replaced by CSJ facing off against a debuting Claudio Castagnoli, which is a pretty damn good consolation prize. While I'm sure the current NJPW television champion and Danielson will have their day eventually, no matter the opponent, this man is still a treat to watch. His lanky frame gives him the amazing ability to twist his adversaries up like a pretzel, bending limbs in ways that seem impossible, or trapping them in innovative holds that are nearly inescapable. Zack Sabre Jr. is a master of the art of submission. 
Edition, Minoru Suzuki. A nickname like Murder Grandpa might make your eyes roll back from cringe, but hey, we've all been wrong at certain points in our life. But case in point on how dangerous this man truly is, let's go back to Dynamite last year. Suzuki's theme song is Kase ni Nure, or King of the World. If you go to an NJPW show, everyone sings it, it's a 10 out of 10 time. Now during his first ever entrance in All Elite Wrestling, production cut his music off before the climax of the song. This very much upset Suzuki, and AEW responded by pub publicly apologizing to the man on air. That's how legitimately dangerous he is. Minoru Suzuki is the deadliest man in all of pro wrestling, and you will respect that. He's had such a long career to where naming one opponent to go and watch for reference would be nearly impossible, but his stuff with John Moxley is very, very good. Also, his Instagram is such a great follow. He collects socks. Sonata. The Sonata of the past has normally come up short when it comes to his quest for singles gold. Before his current spot in NJPW, he was most successful in his tag team with Evil. In 2016, Sonata made his shocking debut for NJPW, rolling with Naito's LIJ faction. After leaving LIJ, he would then start his own faction, Just Five Guys. Sonata would go on to win the 2023 New Japan Cup. Sonata completed his seven-year-long journey, finally winning the NJPW title from Okada at Sakura Genesis earlier this this year. To be completely honest, I haven't seen much of Sonata's work for myself, and I'm really excited to see him take on Jack Perry at this year's event and getting to know the man and the performer a little bit more. Tetsuya Naito. Tranquilo! The LIJ leader, once rejected by the NJPW audience, is now one of the most charismatic in-ring performers on the roster. Close in style and in canon to Andrade El Idolo, Naito's journey up the card has been a challenging one. Naito and his longtime fans were finally validated as he became the first ever double champion in NJPW, winning both the IWGP Heavyweight title and Intercontinental title. If you're completely fresh to New Japan Pro Wrestling, let me put it to you this way. The cool kids like Naito, the normies like Okada. Clark Connors. One of the younger wrestlers on our list, let me take you on the journey on how I became a Clark Connors fan. I was devastated to hear the news that Ishii had to be taken out of the first ever Forbidden Door just days before the event. Either way, the four-way to crown the inaugural All-Atlantic Champion still seemed great, but I had no idea who Clark Connors was. And then I watched it live and I went, oh shit. He's fucking him. On the car ride back to our hotel from the United Center, all of my friends were in agreement that Clark Connors was the biggest surprise of the night. This man's in-ring work demands your attention. A graduate of the New Japan Pro Wrestling LA Dojo, he's not just a great athlete. NJPW Dojo grads who have made it to this point in the card are very much worth the spotlight. While his faction, the Bullet Club, has seen a big refresh since Switchblade left in JPW, Clark Connors is going to be a big time player in the group for years to come now, and his no-nonsense edge fits perfectly into mainline New Japan Pro Wrestling. Also, his theme song is a freaking bop. Go listen to it. Fred Rosser. Okay, now listen, I know what your first thought might be. Why the f*** does this guy have Darren Young from NXT on this damn list? And to that I say, this is a completely different wrestler than Darren Young. Rosser has slowly become one of the biggest babyfaces in NJPW. If you're wondering why NJPW Strong has slowly built a bigger fan base, Fred is a big reason for that. One of the most underrated feuds of last year has to be Dirty Tom Lawler versus Fred Rosser over the NJPW Strong World title. If you think the classic Dusty Rhodes style babyface is dead in the wrestling business, he would like to prove you wrong. And if you're a longtime wrestling fan, it's a bigger shocker that it's coming from one of the primetime players. I had the pleasure of seeing Fred Rosser versus Minoru Suzuki at Autumn Attack back in 2022. Fred Rosser is a main event talent. Fred Rosser could be a mainstay of New Japan Pro Wrestling for years to come. And most of all, Fred Rosser has been one of my favorite wrestlers of the past few years. And that is our list for the 10 NJPW wrestlers you need to watch out for before watching Forbidden Door. Who is your favorite New Japan Pro Wrestler? Let me know in the comments down below. This has been Extreme League Wrestling, and we'll catch you next time.